Hey guys, it's Shara from Woodshop Diaries and today I'm going to show you how I built this fireplace feature wall for our living room. So when we first moved into this house, all of the walls were completely blank and empty. There were no built-ins, no storage, nothing to give it any character whatsoever. After we had been here for a little bit, I did finally paint the walls to brighten things up a little bit. And you may remember from a few videos ago, I did add these library bookshelves. But this past week, I finally added this fireplace feature wall and I'm super excited to share it with you in this video. So if you're ready to get this project started, let's go. So this is what we're currently working with. This is the back wall of our living room. You can see it's like a decent sized wall. Here's Lucy's bed from a few videos ago. I'm gonna get rid of all of these things, clear this wall, remove the baseboards, and um, find the studs. Get ready to start framing this up. To get this project started, I removed the baseboards on the wall that I was going to be working on. Since I'll be adding a new fake wall here, I wanted it to go flush to the existing wall and I'm replacing these baseboards here anyway because I don't really like them. I located the wall studs and used a level to mark lines on the wall where the studs were. Based on the design that I had planned in my head, I knew I wanted my new fake wall to be about 7 foot wide. Luckily, I was able to find two studs that I could use that were about seven foot apart, so I didn't have to screw any boards horizontally across the back to hold the sides in place. I jumped right into framing this box out after I determined its location. To do this, I screwed together two side walls made of two by fours and secured them to the studs that I had marked. Since this box would be about 84 inches wide, I took 84 inches minus 7 inches for the 2x4 sidewalls and cut a 77 inch long 2x4 to space the second side out evenly. Then I headed back to the shop to lay out the front wall. The front wall was a little more complicated because I needed an opening for the fireplace and also an opening for the cubby that I was building on the right side. So I have my wall here laid out. Um, it's upside down, but just imagine with me for a minute. This hole right here will be the rough opening for the fireplace insert. These studs right here need to be 16 inch on center because this is where we're going to mount the TV and the TV mount is made for 16 inch on center studs. So I've got everything like laid out. I'm going to get it assembled so I can carry it in and like cross my fingers and make sure that it fits and everything works. I laid out my wall to accommodate an opening for the fireplace box and an opening towards the right side to add these removable cubbies. This tall opening serves two purposes. One, because I just like the look of the stacked wood here and two, so we can have access to outlets and or TV cables, etc. We're using an electric fireplace here and it pulls so much power that it really needed its own circuit to run the heat. So we need to access inside here to add that later, but for now we can just use the existing outlets and enjoy the lights. So these are the two 16 inch on center studs that I had to make sure were in the correct location. Everything else is kind of, it is what it is. I'm gonna split my drywall joint down this stud right here. So I wanna make sure that this piece is in line with this piece so I can butt my drywall pieces right there. Once the front wall was assembled, I carried it inside and screwed it between the sides. Now I secured this at the top and then I thought better of it, which I'll address in a second. But I did add two screws at the bottom of the wall as well. I used some concrete screws and I pre-drilled before driving them and I kept getting mad because I think I was hitting some rebar on this left side. So I turned off the camera because I was getting frustrated, <laughs> but I did end up getting two screws in, one on the left and one on the right. Anyway, once this was all framed out, I started adding the drywall. I 
cut to fit drywall pieces to cover this box, making sure to leave openings for the fireplace and the cubby. I do not enjoy drywall work at all, but I really wanted a smooth surface for this, so that's what I used. However, shiplap or tile would work great for this too. I actually cut these two big front pieces out in the shop and then my dad came over and helped me carry them inside because it was super windy that day and I didn't want to take a chance on carrying these inside and then breaking in the wind. Dad doesn't like to be in front of the camera so I turned it off for us getting these pieces on here but I just installed them just like the sides. Lou, do you hate drywall mudding too? Yeah? I need you to stay out of the way so we don't get dog hair in the mud. Okay, all right, gonna mud. I'm probably not gonna show a lot of footage of this because it takes a long time. I'm gonna run out of camera battery. I'm gonna run out of SD card. Um, also, it's just my least favorite thing in the world to mud drywall. So I'm <laughs> probably gonna just turn on the radio and just get the job done. I mudded the joints and the corners and just did my best. I'm not a drywall expert and I do not want to be. If you're looking for drywall tips, you may want to search for videos on that because I don't have any expertise here to share. I do my best. That's about it. <laughs> but after three coats of mud and lots of sanding because I'm so bad at this, I primed and painted the box. Okay, so I actually screwed the frame of this fireplace, like the two by four studs. I screwed the walls to the trusses in two different places. And then I attached the drywall. And then after the fact, I realized like, probably shouldn't screw these to the trusses. So I actually got inside the box and removed the screws from the trusses. But in order to structurally support the corners at the top from like wiggling, um, I added some braces, so I'll show you what I did, and this would be a lot easier to do before adding the drywalls. So I'm gonna turn on my little headlamp here so you can see, but I just screwed a two by four from this back section here into the front section here. So there's a little 45 brace there, and another one on the other side. So that will secure the front corners from like wiggling. I painted this tricorn black by Sherwin Williams. It's the same color that I use for my kitchen island, so it kind of ties this whole big open space in our home together. And I just really like the black and white combination. Once the paint was dry, I recruited Danny to help me install the fireplace, and I had a moment of panic that it wasn't going to fit. Hold up. You didn't count for the feet. Oh, they're supposed to be removed. Crisis averted. <laughs> we actually debated on whether we wanted to add a gas fireplace or an electric fireplace here, and since 99% of the time we won't actually be using the heat function, we decided that it just wasn't worth running the gas line and spending the extra money when all we really wanted was the look of the fire and not the actual fire. Anyway, I cut to fit, painted, and then nailed crown molding around the top. Then I came back later to replace the baseboards and add cove molding around the bottom. Notice that throughout this process, I painted everything. I just didn't show much of that part on the video because you all know how I feel about painting. <laughs> and the last part was figuring out this cubby situation. Full disclosure, I had not really fully thought out how I wanted to trim slash frame this out or how I wanted to install the removable cubby boxes. I had considered finishing these corners with drywall and then after doing the other corners, I decided there was no way I was doing that again. So I was just going to trim out the outside and install these boxes so they'd be flush to the front so I didn't have to deal with the drywall edge. But once I installed them, I wasn't thrilled with that either. So I ended up ripping some two inch wide strips from a one by six board and cutting out a large rabbit to make it like a little corner trim piece. I cut these to fit inside the opening, mitering the corners 45 degrees. I was pleasantly surprised how clean this looked, so I went ahead and nailed it in place, took some measurements, and headed to the shop to rummage through my scrap plywood pile to build some simple boxes. 
I just screwed together three identical size plywood boxes and added quarter inch plywood on the back side. Simple as could be. I really tried to come up with all kinds of neat and creative ideas to install these. Some ideas used door slides, some French cleats, slide outs, but after just thinking about it, I ended up making it super, super basic. I screwed together some scrap 2x6 blocks from the shop to sit in place between the existing wall and the fake wall that I added and simply slid these boxes into the cubby on top of it. These really aren't that heavy, so if and when we need to remove them, I can simply slide them out, crawl inside, then replace them once I'm done hanging out behind our fake wall box. <laughs> At this point, all was complete except for adding the extra outlet, which we'll take care of later. And now we have this nice fireplace feature wall to kind of anchor our living room space. Honestly, my favorite part is just being able to sit back and watch the flames. I don't even care if they're fake. It's still mesmerizing. And Lou seems to enjoy them too. I hope you enjoyed watching this project come to life. And if you aren't already subscribed, I'd love if you'd follow along so you don't miss out on all the upcoming projects and plans coming soon. You can check out more project details in the link in the description, along with the materials and supplies list as well. Thanks so much for watching, friends, and until next time, happy building!